Okay, so moving on from our last class on um, question five, harmony in the leaving certs uh, composition paper, the composing paper. Um, so we're going to carry on with the example from the uh, uh, that we used in the last class, which is the 2010 leaving cert uh, paper, question five from the leaving cert paper. So again, it would be handy if you had this, and if you're following on from our from the last class, um, you would have put in the chords yourself. Um, already okay so we're going to move on now to, to, to how to create a baseline now the important thing here is it's not just a matter of creating a baseline simply creating a baseline here does not tick the box so when you're um when you're doing this question there is a certain amount of black and white in it like either the answer is right or wrong so for example um chords the chords you pick are generally either right or wrong and particularly the underneath each chord box here and um, the bass note that you select must uh, match the chord you've chosen on top and that's easy that's either right or wrong so it's it's not quite like say the melody writing question we would have done um where there's room for interpretation. In certain parts of this, it's either right or it's wrong. Um, however, in the baseline, there is some interpretation here. There is some kind of room for kind of uh, the quality of the baseline. And that's what you're marked on, the quality of your baseline. Simply writing a baseline will not get you the marks for that point. The quality of the baseline comes into it. So here we're going to look at how to write a high quality uh, baseline, a good baseline, not simply a baseline. A couple of things to watch out for, okay? And this, a lot of this might seem quite obvious to you. Um, creating a baseline of good quality. For the first thing you have to do is, is select your chords. You must do the chords first. Uh, that would be my advice anyway. Um, so work through your chords, input the chords into the box. Um, then when it comes uh, to, to matching, to putting in your, your baseline then, uh, please, please, please. Now this is stating the obvious, okay? Um, and we probably shouldn't need to go into this, but anyway. You are writing in the bass clef. Um, every year when I'm correcting mock papers, Christmas papers, you name it, I always get a few people who hand up answers in uh, the bass line is written in the treble clef. And again, despite the fact that I know what you mean, um, that I know what you're trying to do, I, or a leaving cert examiner, probably more important, cannot give you marks based on the fact that they know that you meant to write in the bass clef. Okay, so if you write this amazing, uh, amazing bass line, but you've used the treble clef, i.e., so for example, let's say you want to write the note C and you've written it on the third space, which is where it will be in treble clef, and you accidentally write it in the, uh, uh, sorry, if you write it there, instead of writing it in the second space where it will be for, for bass clef, you won't get any marks and it will be all likelihood, unless you've stumbled off a bizarre um, coincidence, it will probably be a terrible bass line. Watch out for that. Okay, so please remember you're writing the bass clef. Third thing, sketch in a note head under each box as you do select the chords, okay? So for example, if you decided, so in this particular example, we're, we're in the key of A flat. So once you've decided, on, for example, the, key, the, the, the chord of A flat in a particular box, sketch in the note A flat underneath and do this as you go along. So once you've decided this is the chord I'm choosing, put your bass note in underneath there then. Just sketch a note head. Don't worry about the rhythm or anything like that. Just really, really lightly. Something that you can probably rub out later on. If you want to, you might not need to, okay? So do that. Third thing is then to, to, to start writing your bass line, you must note the rhythmic and melodic pattern of the given bass line and use this as your guide or your template. So you'll be given a few bars of a bass line and you have to carry on in that style or pattern. So we're going to look at that in a moment, okay? Uh, next, don't be over overly complicated. You're not writing a harmony or a counterpoint line here. Bass lines are kind of inherently quite kind of repetitive and, and not, not dull, but they're not um, elaborate or ornate. You don't want to take away to the, from the melody. They are there, the, a bass line is there to support the melody. The melody line is what's featured in a piece of music. The bass line just gives a nice kind of underlying support to that melody line and fills it up. It does not take away from it. Okay. Uh, and then a couple, couple a little trick here. So if a chord sequence is repeated, uh, so for example, let's say it did, and it happens quite a bit in this one here, and it will happen in your piece. You're sure to get a repeated chord sequence somewhere. And just take the same bass line and repeat it. Don't think, okay, I can't use that bass line again because it's boring. I, I nearly encourage you to think boring here. Think simple, 
don't overcomplicate it, okay? We, more about that now as we start to work through our exercise. So again, I'm working from the 2010 paper. So in our last tutorial, we did we worked through how to select the chords from this, uh, uh, for this exercise. And I would encourage you to maybe just, if you want, just take a few minutes to go back over this tutorial. This is in the major key. The rules of the bass line are the same in the minor key. However, we're gonna look at a different tutorial for writing chords in the minor key. So, so keep that in mind for, um, for next week's class. But um, in, in this, when you're selecting a bass line, when you're creating bass line, the same rules apply, major key and minor key. So here's, here's the he, he, a bass line that I've created for this question, for, 20, for the 2010 Higher Level Leaving Cert Composing paper, okay? It's a little bit hard to make out there, so I'm, in, in the next page here, uh, you, you'll see I'm going to break it down one line at a time or two lines at a time. It's a bit clearer to write. But just to go back to the, the overall picture there for the first one, I'm going to give you an overall sense of what I've done here. And then we look at it in a little, uh, little more detail. Okay, so first of all, you can see in the first line here, we have um, A flat. Okay, it's coming down to an E flat. So bam, A, G, F, E. It's going down for and then up to F here. Bam, 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 bam. Bum, 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 bum. So just look at the rhythm here first of all. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that rhythm and, and I'm going to repeat that rhythm. And I'm literally going to repeat it over and over and over again. Look at the next two bars. Bum, 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 You get the idea. It's the same rhythm over and over and over again. That's the rhythm first of all, okay? You can even sketch that in along the top if you want. Next thing is put the melody to it, okay? So the first thing is you'll see e under each chord box, you're going to match the root note of the chord. So A flat has to have an A flat underneath it. F minor has to have an F. D flat has to have a D flat. E flat has to have an E flat. Same way. So make sure you've done that first of all. So you can see here in this particular bar here, I've copied the rhythm from bar one and I've copied the pattern, okay? I've gone down a fourth, okay? E, D, C, B flat before going back up to the root note again. And then I've gone down to a G here. The reason I've gone down to a G here is the next bar is an A flat and an E flat. A flat being the first note in this bar. And if you look at the pattern here, when I went from, when, when the original given opening went from the first bar to the second bar, it, it, it dropped down one step, sorry, it went up one step to the start of the next bar. So for example, we had a D flat here, so, uh, we went down a step at the end of the first bar to lead us on, to pass us on nicely onto that, um, onto the first note there. So that's why we've gone for a G there. Okay, E flat, G rises up to the A. So we followed the same pattern. Okay, down a fourth, okay, and then um, the leading note onto the next bar there. Okay, and then bum 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 bum. And as you can see here, I've literally just taken four E flats. It's fine. You know, it's good. Okay. Four E flat quavers. Same thing I've done here. Four B flat quavers there. Okay. Um, now, moving on to this. Uh, sorry, moving on to this line here. And this is what I want, what I want to speak about here. And actually, it, it happens here as well. Bar so one, two, three. Bar five, the fifth complete bar, uh, is the same as bar one. The chord sequence is the same as bar one. A flat to F minor. So I'm going to take A flat to F minor from bar one. Literally just copy it. Right. That happens again here. Happens again here. And if you know here, actually, bar two, um, this the, the chord sequence here, D flat to E flat, is the same as the chord sequence in bar two up here. Copy it. Don't think for one second that, no, I shouldn't do that because it might be boring. It's good to do that. Okay? So take it nice and simply. So you can see I've copied the rhythmic pattern, I've copied the melodic pattern out from the whole, uh, from, from, from the opening two bars. Okay? Root note, down a fourth, up a step. Down a fourth, up a step. Okay, and I've continuously done that all the way through. Um, now, I've gone through it a little bit more detail here. It's a little bit clearer to see here. Okay, so you can see at the start of this bar here, bar three, I started off with the root note, dotted crotchet, as it was in the first bar. I've gone down a fourth, a quaver, B flat, as is what happened here. Okay, and then I've gone up to the root note of the next chord. But as you can see here, there is no next chord. So the next chord is still an E flat there. So instead of going up to an F like I had there in bar one, I've just gone back to the E flat. Okay. And then my next note was a quaver. So you can see in bar one here, the last note was a step down 
from the first note in the next bar. So to decide on what note to put here, I looked at the next bar, which is an A flat, and I've gone a step down. And that's how we decided the G flat there. And then I repeated that note again, because if you look in bar two, so we're in the second bar, it is a two bar phrase. In the second bar of the two bar phrase you're given, the second note, the quaver, is the same note as the first note. So I've just done the same note as the first note here, following that pattern. And then I've gone E flat, E flat, E flat, E flat. Now the reason I've chosen that is this is the, the 2010 paper. Nowadays you're leaving sort of paper, you're not expected to use passing notes necessarily here. Um, so I'm just keeping it simple because I know that nowadays that would be perfectly acceptable to just do four E flats, which is kind of what you would do in a bass line. Think of it as if you were a bass guitar player, and um, that's the kind of rhythm you would put there. Okay, so um, moving on from that, again, next next bar here is the same chord sequence as bar one. So I just copied it, literally copied it, cheat, whatever you want to do. Okay, next bar then, B flat minor going to B flat over D flat. So I'm looking at the same, the, I'm looking at the rhythm from the second bar, because we're in the uh, second bar of this phrase. So I'm in the second bar of the rhythm phrase here. So the rhythm, dot of crotchet, quaver, four quavers. Put your first note as the chord. Okay, the root note of the chord, B flat, got to be a B flat there. The second note here should be the same as the first note. So I've done that there. And then for my four quavers, I look at the root note of uh, my chord, which is D flat. And I just put in four D flats there, four quavers there. Okay. Uh, lines three and four, same thing here. There's the two bar phrase. Okay, um, so in the two bar phrase, uh, we start off dot of crotchet on the root note, same note. Down a fourth to the A flat there. Um, sorry, bigger part down a fifth to the A flat there. And then I just want to point out something here. I've just changed this a little bit here. Okay, bar two, the second bar of the uh, of the uh, of the opening phrase. You look at here is the same note here. In this bar here, I've just changed that a little bit. Instead of going B to an E, I've just put it, made that a D flat so that it needs just leads nicely onto the E flat. It's quite ni nice to do there. Okay, you don't have to do that. Another B flat there would have been perfectly acceptable. I'm just doing this myself, okay? Uh, then onto the next line, A flat minor to F minor, that's chords one to six in the key of A flat, which is the same as bar one, repeated. D flat here. Now, just again, normally here, what I've been doing up to, what I've been saying to you to do so far is dot a crotchet, root note, quaver, same note again. But just so that we don't have four D flats in a row here, like we go ba 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 bum, I'm gonna ba 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 I'm going to just for a bit of variety, I'm taking the third note in the chord here um, and making my first two quavers here. But you could do a lot of D flats there. As you see, that might be a little bit overly boring. Just to watch out here, that would mean here if I was to do, let's say I was to do four, um, so you can you can see I, I have a D flat here. Um, sorry, it, 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 if I did do four D flats there, or let's say I did four Fs there for a bit of variety, you might notice that I end up doubling the thirds um, the, the the third note for the melody line in the chord is up there in the melody line. I don't want to double the third down here in the bottom. However, that's only for when you're picking your chord box. Okay, it doesn't matter if you double the third anywhere else. So, and again, don't focus too much on that. It's just in case you spot it there. Same next bar. We're back into the two bar rhythm. B flat down to F. Back up to B flat. Um, I'm moving up to an E flat here. I'm basically following the exact same pattern after that. Um, and just at the very, very end, um, A flat, F minor, these two bars, okay, in, if I come to the last four bars, the first two bars are the same as the opening two bars. And again, that's not unusual. That's not particular to this bar. Think of your melody writing. Like we do bass melodies and, 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 and uh, compositions on uh, repeated chord patterns. So like, I don't think that this is bizarre that this is working out well. This happens a lot, okay? So same as bar one, just copy it. Same as bar two, copy it, okay? So look, scan for that straight away. And then, I could, I've got the same chord sequence here, D flat, E flat, A flat. I could take that same rhythm again. Just something I like to do. I call this defining the cadence. Just as you're coming to the end, bam, 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 bam. Just two crotchets instead of the quavers there. It just makes it feel like you're dragging it out a little bit. You're, you're, you're saying, okay, no, take note of this. It's ending here. So instead of just doing four quavers, two crotchets there um, and two crotchets at the end. Any four, four bar is very good. Again, just watch out here. There's an anacrusis in this piece here. So make sure your last bar adds up to whatever you're missing from uh, the opening bar, um, from the first incomplete bar. Okay, guys, there you go. So that's a guide to writing a good quality bass line. Um, we get more of it done in class, more detail. I hope this has been helpful. Email me if you have any questions or if there's anything I can help you with. All right. Okay. Well done, everybody. Bye.